my name is Eric Tucker and I'd like to go through some of the things you might want to look on your Rotax four-stroke engine when you're doing pre-flight. We want to have a look, a visual look at the engine and this is more important than if we were going to do a check between flights. So if I have access to the engine I can open up my cowling or nacelle. I'm going to look at it and do a visual check for any signs of visual leaks. Okay, This is important for me. I want to see that I have no visual leaking around my fuel pump. I'm also going to do a quick check around anything that's visually uh, in my line of sight, such as water fittings, make sure they're not dripping or leaking. F fuel fittings are very important to always inspect, check where they go into the carburation. And then as I come down to my oil pump, I'm going to check my part line between the oil filter and the pump. This is important because um, I always like to put a witness mark, and here you can see a factory witness mark across the pump to the housing. Make sure that there's been no loosening of the filter canister itself. Okay, and, it, and this one it feels nice and secure. My witness mark is together. Now in addition, I'll do a quick check underneath the engine. I'll make sure I don't have any visible drips of oil or fluids coming out the bottom. Now there would be oil lines connected here going to my oil tank and I would check my fittings as they attach here and at my oil canister for my dry sump. Moving towards the rear, if it's the first start of the day and the engine is still cold, if I have access to it I'm going to take my dispatch bottle and I'm going to remove the top of this cap and check to make sure that my fluid is full, the rubber gasket is not damaged or distorted. If the engine's hot or has any heat in it, do not do this. This could be dangerous and we want to avoid any scalding or damage. I would then check the line that would be attached to this that would go to my overflow bottle, much as you would find in your automobile. And it should have fluid in it and the overflow bottle should have a small bit of coolant left in it. Now moving back towards the carburetors, my float bowl is attached. It has a security bale wire that holds it on. Make sure that this is firmly in place, no signs of major leakage or any kind of it's not uncommon if you're using 100 LL to see a little blue staining, which is common. Don't be alarmed by that. Have somebody, if you can't do it yourself, activate and check your throttle throw. Make sure your linkage is smooth and correct without any binding. This is, of course, done with the engine off. And uh, normally I'll take my hands and I'll run across the bottom of the valve covers to look for signs of visible leaking. Now, a drop of oil is not uncommon but it should not leave a staining. You shouldn't see an oozing that is coming into inside the nacelle on your cowlings and inside the braces. If you have access to the back and you can visually check in underneath, there is behind underneath the water pump, there's a small witness hole, which may not be visible in some installations. But again, if you see signs of staining from a leaking water pump witness hole, look on your muffler or other devices that might be immediately below that. It's not uncommon to see a drip, but it shouldn't be something that's dripping steady. When you're doing your pre-flight, then that pretty much would, that pretty much finishes anything visually, and there's nothing really else to worry about other than uh, going into next would be your startup. Before you're going to start the engine, now that you've done a visual inspection, we would go to our propeller, and I would recommend you remove the canister cap from the oil tank. At this point, with the engine off, mag switch is off, rotate your propeller in the correct direction. And this will be counterclockwise when I'm in standing in front of the engine. So I'm going to rotate the propeller and slowly, and this is going to create crankcase pressure from the pistons, and the pistons are therefore going to push any trapped oil that might be in the crankcase into the oil canister. Now when uh, you do this, it might take 10 or 12, maybe 15 times of rotation. What you will hear from the oil tank is you'll hear a burping. It, it will burp a bubble of air through the oil. Now when it does this, you'll get this bloop, bloop sound. It'll be very distinctive, and you'll know you've purged any oil that's residual in the crankcase. Then I will check the oil volume in the canister. This is to avoid overfilling the oil system. Now once you install it, you've got the oil level right, reinstall the cap, now you're ready to start your engine. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency. 
flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com.